Hey guys, how you doing? It's Richie here again, uh, coming at you with another video on uh, our online video series on BordenCC.org. Um, last week, our last video, we looked at uh, John 1, 1 through 18. Uh, I said that today was going to be uh, chapter 1, 19 through verses 28, but we're actually going to move that down to um, verses 34 just because they go together a little better. So uh, if you got your Bible, go ahead and uh, grab that and we'll turn to John 1 and I'll go ahead and read that. So here you go. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests to the Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they said to him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands I'm sorry, but among you, among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and, re and remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness to that this is the Son of God. Okay, so these verses give a good glimpse into uh, John the Baptist. Uh, they give a good glimpse into the Pharisees. It uh, gives a good glimpse into Jesus. Um, so let's go ahead and break that down. Uh, you know, the first half of this, uh, 19 through 28, um, basically what happens is this is what's going on. So John the Baptist has, has come into the wilderness. Uh, he's out in the wilderness. He is baptizing people uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. Um, even though he is not really authorized to do so, he is not, you know, um, ordained by the church to do so. You know, he's not the Messiah. He's not Elijah. He's not the prophet. Um, he's he's not authorized to do this in the eyes of the Pharisees. So here he is. He's out um, pointing people to Jesus, even though Jesus really isn't on the scene yet in a ministry way. Um, but he's pointing to them and he's baptizing them with water to to um, make it easier for them to see Jesus when he comes. Um, it's, it, he's preparing them to meet Jesus whenever Jesus gets there. So, um, so let's back up. Let's talk about John the Baptist for just a minute. John the Baptist, um, he's the cousin of Jesus, okay? He's Jesus' cousin. Now, um, you know, this is kind of strange to us in our, our 21st century thought. You know, I'm pretty close to my cousins. You know, I, I'm, if I saw my cousins, I would know them. Uh, if there's something special about them, I would know them. Um, but so it's kind of weird that he's like, you know, you know, he who comes after me, the one I don't know, the one I don't know, he goes on and on. Um, but basically what, what, what is going on here is John the Baptist is, you know, obviously he knows who Jesus is. Um, you know, you read in Luke that, uh, Mary and Elizabeth spent time together while they were pregnant. Um, and I'm sure that Jesus and, and John, they knew each other. I'm sure they were probably pretty close growing up. Uh, you know, then John the Baptist gets this call from God, and God, God tells him, you know, it says in, um, uh, further on down, um, verse 32, um, I'm sorry, 33, he says, I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize the water said to me, and he goes on um, saying how God told him he would know who Jesus was. So John the Baptist um, gets this call from God, and he goes out and he starts baptizing people. So, but he doesn't know that Jesus is the Messiah, the one that's to come. Um, until he gets to the point where he baptizes him, uh, you know, and then this dove comes down from heaven, and light comes down, and, um, you know, we read about it in um, um, Matthew 3, the story of Jesus being baptized, where God says from heaven, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Um, you see that, and then John realizes, hey, you know, Jesus, my cousin here, he is the one, he is the Messiah, he's the one that I've been pointing to. Um, you know, it, it's it's it'd be pretty crazy, you know. It'd be pretty crazy for him. Someone who he grew up with is the Messiah that he's been pointing to uh, for this extended period of time. So John the Baptist has got this ministry out in the wilderness. People are coming out to him. People are following him. He has his own group of disciples, which we'll learn about in the next video. 
Um, but um, this is his ministry. And then here comes the one that he's been pointing to, and it turns out to be his cousin. So it's probably mind-boggling for him. Uh, but to get to the actual um, text and the actual um, you know, events that are going on in here, um, priests uh, and Levites from Jerusalem come and they say, who are you? And they're saying, you know, hey, what's going on? Why are you out here? Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, you know, they didn't know what he was doing. They didn't know why he was doing it. So the Pharisees and the religious leaders at the time, um, you know, this is a, a heresy type thing. So they send him out, send him out to see who John the Baptist is, why he's doing what he's doing, and more than likely to get him to stop, to get him to shut up. Um, you know, so they say, hey, are you Elijah? And he says, no, I'm not Elijah. And they say, are you the prophet? Nope, that's not me. All right, well, then who are you? Why are you doing what you're doing? And he says, I'm the one to call out in the wilderness to proclaim um, that Jesus is coming, to make straight the way of the Lord, um, as the prophet Isaiah said. This is straight from Isaiah uh, 43, verse, um, I'm sorry, Isaiah 40, verse 3. So I'm going to go ahead and read 43 through 11. It says, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and the flesh shall see it together, and the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And voices say, and a voice says, cry, and I, sh and I said, what shall I cry? All, fle all flesh is grass, and beauty and flower in the fields, and the grass withers, the flowers fade, and the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are like grass. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, you herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good news, lift it up and fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God, behold the Lord God. He comes with might and his arms rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense is before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and he will gently lead those who are with young. So this is a great, you know, obviously this is pointing towards the Messiah. Uh, so for when, so when John the Baptist said to these um, religious leaders and uh, to the Levites that came, uh, when he said, you know, this this is who I am. I am the voice in the wilderness crying out um, to make straight the pathway um, for the Savior, for the Messiah. They would have known exactly what he is talking about. Um, the um, um, the religious leaders at the time, you know, they would have had their Bibles pretty much memorized. Uh, they would have had um, for a young Jewish man um, to even get into seminary, uh, first century Jewish seminary, um, they would have had to have the first five books of the Bible completely memorized. Uh, if you've read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, if you've read those, you know, that would have been a pretty laborious task to have done before you were 12 years old. Um, you know, Deuteronomy, that, that's a that's a long book. You know, Numbers is a pretty long and drawn out and boring book, you know, and they would have had that completely memorized. Um, so by the time these religious leaders got to it, they would have known exactly uh, what John the Baptist is talking about. They would have known the teachings of Isaiah and the writings of Isaiah and, the, and um, the, um, everything that he said, they would have known what he was talking about. So for John the Baptist to say to these Pharisees, hey, I am the one, I'm making way, uh, I'm the voice in the desert calling out, um, they would have known exactly what he is talking about. Uh, so let's back up a little bit. They ask him first if he's Elijah. Um, you know, last week I said, you know, Moses was the big, you know, he's the, central icon of Judaism. They, um, you know, he brought the law, you know, he led them out of, it, led them out of Egypt uh, through the Red Sea, led them through the wilderness, uh, you know, got the law, met with God, saw God face to face in the tabernacle. Um, well, you know, if, if Moses is the top guy, Elijah is just a half step behind him. Um, it, probably not even that much, probably a quarter step. And just right behind him, um, you know, Elijah is, you know, he was the main prophet. You know, he was, he was the big guy. Um, and if you remember, uh, you know, if you've studied the Old Testament, you studied your Bible, you know that Elijah did not die. Um, Elijah, um, towards the end of his um, ministry, you could say, um, you know, he took Elisha, he groomed him up to take his place after he left, and then um, Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. He was taken up in, a, in like a tornado, I guess, um, up into heaven. So he did not actually die a physical death. Um, so in the Jewish culture and the Jewish religion, they fully believed that Elijah was going to come back to earth. They believed Elijah was going to descend from heaven um, when it was time for the Messiah to come. Um, now, obviously, if you read on um, in John, you see the um, transfiguration on the mountain where Jesus is on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. 
um, during that time where he transcends into you know full full on godness. So um, anyway, so so Elijah's a big deal. So they think that this you know hey are you Elijah? You know that's their first question. Are you Elijah? You know they're they're checking off bases here basically. So the next question I asked, and they said, are you the prophet? Now, um, some people can read this and think that maybe they're talking about Jesus. Maybe they're talking about the Messiah to come. That's not quite um, true. Uh, and, you know, they, that in the Jewish religion there, they believed that there was going to be a prophet that came that was greater than Moses um, that would come before the time of the Messiah, around, around the time of the Messiah, and basically say, you know, hey, here is, you know, here comes the Messiah. So, um, so John the Baptist says, no, no, I'm the one calling out. So, so you see from there, um, John says, I just baptized with water. Among you, there is one that you do not know um, whose strap, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. Um, you know, so here, so John the Baptist is really throwing out, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm nothing. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely nothing. I'm just here to point you to the one who is actually something. Um, I think there is a pretty big um, attitude and mindset and heart set that we can learn from John the Baptist here of, you know, I'm nothing. I'm worthless. I'm not. I'm not good at all. But here's Jesus. He's the one. He's the one that's going to help you. So that's um, that's pretty big. Um, so verses 29 and down. Um, here, this is, you know, the timing of this may be a little, a little weird. This is um, after the baptism of Jesus. Uh, but he sees Jesus coming through, and he says, "Behold, here comes the Lamb of God." Um, and it doesn't tell us who he's talking to. It says it's the next day. Um, but you can almost get the sense that he's, this is almost kind of a still the same conversation that he's talking to these religious leaders because he says, um, this is the one who I said to you um, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. Now, this is an important thing here where John the Baptist says, he says, um, he ranks before me because he was before me. Uh, you know, that ranks back right back to verse, uh, for chapters 1, uh, 1 through 5, where Jesus was with God in the beginning. Jesus is eternal. Jesus has always been um, so that's a very big thing. Um, so John bore witness. He says, I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove remain on him. I myself did not know it, but he, being God, who sent me to baptize with water, said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So, so when, when John the Baptist got his call, um, that's when he was told how he was going to know who Jesus was. Um, so then, you know, when he baptizes Jesus, you know, and you, in, in the... Um, the Holy Spirit comes down on him and stays on him, and then he knows that that's the Son of God. Now, it's a very telling thing in verse 34 that John the Baptist says. He says, and I have seen this, and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Um, you know, this is before any of Jesus' ministry. You know, this is before his first uh, miracle, um, which is in the next chapter of John, in John chapter 2, where he turns the water into wine. Um, so this is a pretty big statement from John the Baptist saying that, hey, yeah, this is the Son of God. This is the Messiah. This is the one that we have been waiting on um, for you know 400 years now, uh, really for more than 400 years. But you know between Malachi and Matthew, uh, you know there's a 400 year gap there. But they they've been waiting for this. This is what they have been waiting for. So John the Baptist comes out and says, "Hey, this is the Son of God." Now I'm sure if he was talking to the Pharisees there, um, they were probably pretty upset when he said that. You know because we can see down the line in the Gospels that uh, the Pharisees and Jesus really didn't get along. Um, so it was a, a pretty thing. Um, so anyway, so that's all we got for today. Um, so uh, next week we will go through um, uh, one through the rest of chapter one. So 35 through the end of the chapter. So anyway, so go ahead and read that uh, before next time. And uh, we look forward to it and we will see you then. God bless you.